we want to hear those yeah. figures because the if you look at the graph yeah. i can compute the the differentials thank you honorable yeah. please don't look at the graph look at page five oh, but you brought the graph so i have to look at the graph page five. Well. okay page five has the tables yes it's page five i'm looking at actually i'm actually speaking in respect of the table you presented up on page five I've so far based my question on the, the table, on um, that's table ah, figure three. Ah, okay, okay. Yes, yes, sorry, yes. Sorry. Okay, okay. I'm now seeing that I have a different... Oh, okay. I have a different table here. Very well. Which very is well. not in your report. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Sorry about that. If we may have a copy of what, what yes. you are speaking yeah. to. So the, te the details are there. Okay. If you look at the... Capital payments. Uh, uh, very well. Then, then don't don't believe by it. Just yeah. just let's have a copy. Okay. Then it wouldn't have necessitated my yes, question. Yes, yes. No, so, sorry. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, let's go to table nine. Table nine. I think uh, capital payments. Page nineteen. Governor, I hope you are there. Page 19, table 9. That is uh, the last but one. A figure of 248. 11748.23. Margin calls. If you can, uh, because it's, it's, it's a, a new figure in the table, if you compare with the last lesson, you can explain the margin calls to us. We'll be very happy. Yes, yes, it starts on 19, but the table is actually on page 20. What he's referring to is on page 20. And, and again, this has to do with the uh, financial situation that we had uh, in 2022, so that we needed to be making additional payments to our creditors. So those creditors to whom that we owed money were making you know, margin calls on us in order to cover up our positions with them. And this is why we didn't have that problem in 2021, but we did have that problem in, in 2022. You would also notice that we had had to uh, make some repayment of swap facilities in, in 2022. If you go further up that table, Whereas the previous year, we didn't have to make uh, any repayment on that particular swap facility. Uh, the swap facility for Standard Chartered Bank the year before was zero, but in, in 2022, we needed to make an interest payment on the swap facility of over 27.9 million. So the, the credit worthiness situation of the country was such that all our creditors were beginning to get more <laughs> agitated and making financial calls on us. And this is what accounted for the higher capital payments. Yes, Governor, you, you <clears throat> the same table, the same page, even up you have sale of SRD. You see, some of these terms, we agree, uh, you know, they are technical terms, uh, SDR. Yes. Uh, there are monies, big monies going out. If you ask the common person who thinks that he's a taxpayer and you are keeping his money, SDR. We are paid, we have suffered six, $650 million. So, and this is almost uh, about $8 billion. So those two, just uh, assume that we, we don't know anything. Put us in the light so that when we see anywhere, 
SDR, then we know that probably that person is a creditor or we need to find money and pay the person. Because you are saying that these are some of the monies that have to go out because of our situation. It will help us. SDRs are special drawing rights of the IMF. These are, is an accounting uh, notion. In order to make that facility usable in terms of liquidity, being able to use it in exchange of goods and services, you have to sell it and convert it into a dollar or euro in order to be able to make a payment. So given the tighter foreign exchange situation that we found ourselves in, we had to get rid of our SDRs in exchange for uh, more liquid forms of payment. And, and that is what accounts for that. Go ahead, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I want us to go back to the margin calls. The question, my colleague, page 20. The question my colleague was trying to, or the answer he was seeking to get from you is, which institutions are involved in even these margin calls? If you pick the table, the table nine, for many of the other issues, you clearly can see who the payment went to or for what purpose. Like you stated, interest on Standard Chartered Bank swap facility, yeah. you clearly will see what it is meant for. Uh, yeah. Aphrism, you know where it's going. But if you say margin cost, to whom yeah. and what? So we need some additions. Yeah. Uh, we, need to, we need to have some information, further and better particulars in relation to these margin calls. Right. It will help us. Well, if you have the director of the financial market. Thank you very much. Um, it was mainly St Stanchart. We had a facility with Standard Chartered Bank and as uh, Mr. Governor said, um, the conditions resulted in them having a margin call on us. And so that mainly contributed to that uh, margin call on us for the period. So aside, if you look at the page 20, the very first item is in relation to the same standard chartered bank for swap facility. So what exactly is margin call to the uh, ordinary for who is not a, a banker like you or uh, have the opportunity of sitting at your board to understand what is margin cost that this amount will go in for that that's all that we, we want we, we want to know so thank you very much um, so usually as part of the reserves management arrangements of the bank um, we have a number of facilities with counterparties. In this particular case, we had a facility that uh, we, ha we had with Standard Chartered Bank. And because of the uh, difficult market conditions, you remember, as Mr. Governor said, economic conditions moved in ways that became very uh, difficult for the country. And so with the uh, conditions turning against us, what it also meant was that um, if you were to value the uh, facility that we had with them at the time, and also given that we uh, got to a point where the country was, um, our rating, uh, sovereign rating had gone so low, uh, it kind of increased our, um, the cost of our borrowing. And so what that meant was that at the time, um, we had to, they had to terminate the facility. And given the conditions of the market at the time, we suffered some losses. And so that was the loss. The ma they had a margin call on us. So at the time we entered into that transaction, conditions were favorable. But when conditions turned against us and it had to be terminated, we suffered some losses. And so it's that loss that we call the margin call on us. Yeah, uh, thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Um, you know, most of us are not bankers. So most of your 
short terms and abbreviations are the ones that are worrying us and the one that we are asking question on. My question is actually uh, on um, sale buy back. And that gives us, um, there was an increase of about 539 million. So again, can you educate us on what is exactly sale buy back? Huh? These are very complicated technical matters. And I don't know whether you want to get into the <laughs> into that. The issue is Give me a layman's understanding of what assuming I have an arrangement, again, let's say standard chartered bank. We agree to sell foreign exchange, right? To us on a particular date. And we give them, say, a Bank of Ghana bond or a Government of Ghana bond for a 90-day period. And that transaction will be reversed after the 90 days. Depending on the movements in interest rates and exchange rates, you end up either making a gain or a loss. So this is where the sale buybacks come in. So, and this is not just one transaction. Uh, these are reserve management transactions. So there are many of such transactions that will take place uh, in a month. And this, this, this is a total number that you are, you are seeing for a year. So throughout the So you made, you made a profit on that operation? Some of them we made profit. No, I mean some, overall, yes, total. Yes, some of them we made profit. The total, 500 and yes. 39 is yes. an it's a profit of yes. some sort okay thank yes. you thank you uh yes sir um offer thank you thank you mr chairman governor i want to refer you to page 21 Table 10, you know, the second item, progress payment contractors. I can see that there was a big jump between 2021 and 2022 in terms of payment to contractors. On the face of it, you know, it must be applauded. It looks good, but between 2021-2022, we were able to make payments to contractors. Does this represent the whole country uh, and, and what kind of uh, 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 contractors are we talking about? Is it general contractors who, who, who or? These are foreign contractors. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. I know these are yes. foreign contractors, foreign. But, but what I want to know is that are they foreign contractors, you know, executing uh, uh, if you look at the country. table that follows that page, I think some of the details are there. The Ofan Core in Sawam Road is one of them. Uh, the Versailles contractor for the 13th African Games payment is one of them. Bank of Ghana's own head office payments is one of them. Then you have these Ghana Armed Forces uh, payments, as well as part of the work being done on the police hospital. So the details are there for the payments in 2022. So Mr. Governor, so these are not necessarily payments to road contractors. Yes, they are general payments no. to contractors, yes. Not necessarily road. Ofanko in Sawam is a road, is a road contract. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I was not referring specifically to road contractors. I, know, I, I never mentioned road contractors. But I said that if you look at the jump between 2021 and 2022, 
you know, the jump was quite big. So it means that those contractors who were paid, yes, some could be uh, road contractors, but to foreign contractors. And I wanted confirmation you know, that with that big jump, it means that for the one year period, you know, it's quite good. I mean, if something is good, it must also be mentioned that at least uh, good payments were made to, to foreign contractors. And I, I wish that you know, that trend could be maintained. Okay, Honorable Kofi Adams. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I want to take the governor back to page 12 and starting from maybe page 11. And this is in relation to capital receipts. But of interest to me is item numbered 20, paragraph 20, which will be found on the page 12 that the and this of interest to me that the positive variance was due to the central bank and ministry of finance not projecting capital receipts for the period under review you did not project any capital receipts for this period and you ended up having capital receipts as the huge the largest contributor under that component when you look at uh, foreign exchange receipts for the year ended 31st December 2022. If you add both the surrender and non-surrender, COCO, capital receipts, and invisible receipts. Why in your estimates or preparation of whatever projections you said you did not pro you did not project to receive anything from from that component but that ended up being your major contributor can you explain to us whether that decision you took earlier was was right i don't know if you get the the part I'm referring to. Yes, I get the part that I'm trying to understand that myself. I mean, uh, maybe the auditors can explain what what they meant by that. Yeah. Be because. Uh, okay, um, thank you, sir. Uh, thank you very much, um, Mr. Chair. So on the uh, projections, I think it's. Um, sorry. So. Um, on the projections, um, the issue actually is a matter of uh, compositional differences uh, between um, the projections that uh, we make in the cash flow and then the uh, lines in the receipts and payments. So take, for example, with capital uh, receipts in the, um, uh, the, the document, sorry, it includes inflows from uh, the swap, the uh, sale buybacks, uh, et cetera. But those in terms of the projections are captured in a line called foreign um, FX purchases. So um, I think we've had a conversation um, with, the, with the auditors in terms of uh, doing a one-for-one -one mapping between the uh, receipts and payments and then the cash flow projections. Um, going forward, I think the projections have spelled out um, in greater detail the individual components that make it up. And so they should be able to be matched uh, more appropriately going forward. Thanks for uh, But I will take the governor back to his earlier explanation to payments that went to uh, the contractors. Does this payment include your headquarters project? Your Bank of Ghana head office project? Yeah. It includes? I, I, yes, it, it does include it. But I think it's also important 
to understand the project cycle, right? By the time you end up paying for a project, the project must have traveled quite a bit of distance. I actually brought the department responsible for projects. If you want to, for them to take you through the processes, then you understand that even though the money was paid in 2022, the activities had long started as far back as 2020. So it takes a while before some of these things become due for payment. So was it the case that as of 2020, when this activity started, as you indicated, you are the the central bank, you control all affairs. You sit up there. You are supposed to have the eye to see ahead of all of us and be able to predict what we should go into and what we should not go into. One of the major things that we have had to explain away with has been the occurrence of COVID-19 and its attendant effect. Was it the case that we did not predict well enough the impact that was going to have and for the Bank of Ghana to scale down on a project such as a headquarters so as to be able to focus on other other areas? Would you, looking at this, your, your statement and reviewing it, is that, is that the case? Because you are trying to explain the way that even though you paid in 2022, you started work maybe in 2021 or 2020. So that's why I'm asking this question. Yes, you're right. Uh, the activity started much earlier than that. And a lot of it has been downsized. One of the facilities that you have there included an auditorium. That auditorium is not being, you know, you're just going to have a shell. So there has been an attempt to address the issue that you are raising. Okay. Oh, well, last question from you. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Uh, page 23. Page 23. Uh, somewhere you will see final payment for construction of the Kualago Irrigation Project. Yes. Kualago Irrigation Project, final payment. Two, three. At the top there, you see the last bit one. Final payment for the construction of the Kualago Irrigation Project. The question is, I, I thought probably before payments are made, contractors present certificates. Because when you get to Kualago, there's nothing there. There's no even a pool. There's no even a signboard. And if the contractor is taking $11 million, there's nothing. There is, there is, there is no even a, 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 what do we call it, a, like a container. You can't even see the project site. So what certificate was presented before this money was paid? That's my question. Oh. The sun, the sun there was ah uh, at all. There's no even sun on the site. You can't even, you can't even identify the site. Let him answer. I want to know why, how that money was paid. Pay. Yes, he will, he will answer. If the amount you're referring to was paid in 2021, they are not 2022. And the auditors would have to tell us because they must have cited their documentations uh, before they wrote this report. The auditor general, yeah. So maybe they they can explain. Before then, if assuming that it was something like a mobilization, but if you say no, final, okay, no, no, no. It's, it's a final, final payment, payment okay. Can we, is, um, auditors, could
could you help us out over here? He's the um, it says final payment. Now the honourable member is saying that there's nothing at that site. I'm sure when you did the audit, you saw something. Honourable uh, Chair, controller instructed them to pay, and they paid. We are not aware whether the project uh, has been completed or there's nothing ongoing. Yes, sir. Uh, Chairman, um, I'm not happy with the response from the auditors. Because as part of the audit, they simply don't verify payment regularities. They do in-situ inspection of projects. So, yes, you may be at the headquarters, but the regional officers who who are closer to the project could have gone to site to ascertain that not merely paying for the project on paper, but the project has actually been delivered. So that's, that's my first follow-up. My second one is the Pualugu irrigation project is different from the Pualugu multi-purpose dam. So I want to find out that this payment is not in respect of the dam, but it's actually the irrigation which says farmers. Who well, is, is the auditors? They, they saw the documents. Uh, uh, because the, the, the governor actually clarified that it's the auditors. I think the auditors are supposed to. Yes, so they should be speaking to the document, the nature of the document that they saw. Otherwise, then, Chairman, I, I, seek, I seek your leave to demand that the documents based upon which these payments were, was made should be furnished, we should be furnished a copy of the set of documents for, I see. for purposes of um, uh, further interrogation of this matter. I think the auditors could uh, review it and then uh, give us an update on what, uh, which one it is. And since it says final payment, uh, they could uh, give the information back to us on what was done. But Mr. Governor, let's go to page. I follow up on the, on the uh, payment on the Palugu issue because um, the auditors answered that, that the contractors asked for payment and they were paid. And I believe before a contractor will be paid, there should be a certificate. I would like to, of work done, I would like to find out from the auditors whether they cited a certificate of work done that warranted the payment of this amount of uh, $11.9 million. So the auditors, I, know, I just want to find out from the auditors the basis for the payment. Yes. Uh, Chair, at this level, we were looking at a payment made in foreign currency. But if you want the details, then we'll let, we have to go back and reconcile as directed by the chairman. Thank you. Okay. So they will do that. Um, chairman, on the same, on the same table. Yeah, the auditors are going to review it. Since he's brought this up also, because I know uh, there's a next payment, payment for the Mamoto Way and Extension Project. And we know we recently, as Parliament, approved the facility for that purpose. And the project is being done by a Guinea company. I see here some payment for MS Motor Angel and Nigeria E Contra Cow Africa SA. If they can add that one also to this one in providing us the details, it will it will help. It will help. It will go a long way to, to help. And the company MS Power China, 
I think it's the same company that I know was supposed to do the multi-purpose dam project, which was to have come under the Sinohydro. But further particulars will help us in resolving it. So I just wanted you to add that one also to the previous one. Thank you. All right. All right, sir. Thank you. Um, Governor, let's go to uh, page 16. And then when you come to the comparative analysis of the foreign exchange receipts, what I'm interested in is the cocoa. 2021, we had about 2.2 billion. And uh, 2022 is about 1.8 billion. Do you have any idea why the receipts for cocoa, uh, yes, came down close to about $387 million? I think it was both a combination of prices and, and volumes exported in 2022. And this is what accounts for, for the difference. And it appears that you probably would even see a lower amount in 2023. The last uh, review that we did at the MPC suggested that our cocoa output has not been as strong as in the prior year. So, uh, unfortunately, the weather is supposed to be part of it. Uh, my speaking with Cocoa Board suggests that the rains are helping, so the minor crop is expected to improve. As for the excuses why it went down, the production, we, there are several excuses, including I wouldn't say it, but let me read up. Let me read up uh, on page ten, the summary of uh, general recommendations. The auditors, um, paragraph eighteen, we recommended that Bank of Ghana should continue to strengthen its internal controls and supervisory roles on officials who prepare and review the statement to maintain the quality of the report as this would credibly inform stakeholders' decision-making. Uh, without any further questions, I think we are done. Uh, members don't have any other questions, so... No, there was a question about the motorworks. What motorworks? The, the auditors are going to... Yes, the auditors are going to review all that and then give us further and better particulars. Yes. Uh, Governor... Yes, Governor. Th uh. Honorable Isaac, uh, page 27 on our movement in foreign reserve assets and the, the auditors listed a number of foreign reserve assets of the bank. I, and that included gold holdings of special drawing rights and so on and so forth, coins and whatever, investments and fixed deposits. I know the bank also was key in this uh, gold for oil uh, deal processes. Did that arrangement affect your movement in foreign reserve assets in any way? Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for a very important question. The Gold for Reserves program started in 2022. So you won't see the full effects of the benefit in, in 2022. As you can see, uh, we got only 50 million more in terms of our, our gold holdings. But I can assure you that next year, when we come before you, you'll see a big jump in our holdings of gold because of that particular program. But you have also announced 
Dr. Governor, that you are going to cease operating the gold for uh, oil yes. deal. Yes. If it's that positive. It, they are two different Yeah. Issues. I've looked at reserve, but I'm looking at the gold for oil. oil. They say. Yeah. You are the yeah. technical person that I'm speaking to. Yes. But also relating to what is said outside. Yes. Is it a program that you recommend should be pursued considering your position that we should be withdrawing from from it, it is a, a program that we recommend to continue because it helped us in the period of crisis. We only want to make sure that this is done by a commercial bank so that we can have time to focus on our operations as a central bank. So this is the discussions that we are holding going forward. But the ability to be able to exchange our natural resource directly for oil when oil prices uh, get out of hands we think that it's a very innovative program so it's really about the central bank spreading itself too thin by trying to add gold for oil also into our business but we are fully focused on buying gold to build our reserves but those are the two uh, different issues. In not holding colleagues from break, my next and last question in relation to this matter, Mr. Chairman, is to find out from you uh, exactly that the objective of letting the central bank run this is because it's our resource. And some have asked that gold is traded on the market, just like oil traded on the market. The gold for oil doesn't reduce the rate or price at which we purchase the, the, the oil. Neither does it increase or decrease the price at which we sell our gold. Shouldn't it be the case that we follow the usual practice of selling our gold and the money we make, we buy our uh, fuel instead of this trade off and who does the analysis, wouldn't it disadvantage us some way, somehow? And do you think that there's any commercial bank capacitated enough to do this if you are shifting it, if the central bank wants to shift it? Is there a commercial bank capacitated enough to do this. You remember, Mr. Chairman, when I spoke, I said that this is uh, an intervention which was very critical in the heat of the crisis. So yes, the foreign exchange market is functioning better than it was in 2022, right? Oil prices have come down, you know, much better than they were in 2022. Right? So the situation is much better now than it was in 2022 when the gold for oil was introduced. However, we think that it's still an important program for the government to have that option and, and, and to be able to empower a commercial bank to undertake the activity. Should market sentiments change every day? We don't know what would happen tomorrow and we'll wake up and then if we find ourselves in a situation where, you know, prices are, you know, driving the pump prices where they were again, the government has an option to fall on. So it's a very important, innovative instrument. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, Chairman, thank you very much. Um, I am compelled to ask this because of your, your last uh, response to uh, uh, Kofi's question. If you look at page 32 of the report, table 20, um, I see that contrary to your policy that you spoke, the implementation of the 
uh, good for oil, or oil for good policy. Um, some licensed companies, um, they are dealings in gold rather dwindle between 2021 and 2022. Um, the auditors have established that a shortfall of about $126 million um, occurred between the transactions that occurred in 2021 vis-a-vis -vis the transactions for 2022. Uh, what accounted for this? There are many, many uh, factors that account for you know, the production levels of, of, of the various mining companies. I know some of them have shut down Obuasi and a, a couple of other challenges that they had, they had had. But again, remember that in 2022, we had just started the, the gold program. So this was very late in 2022, around November. So our activities have nothing to, to do with the lower level of gold uh, exports in 2022. But interestingly, the auditors are rather saying that this was because of policy changes at the Bank of Ghana. Well, but that, 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 <laughs> they are rather pinning it down to your policy changes. So I was rather hoping that the transactions would have ballooned. Right. Well, they, they got it wrong. I disagree with them if that's what they wrote. <laughs> yeah. I disagree with that because we, we had just started the program late in the year. It couldn't have been the case that the gold for reserves affected that. Uh, let me say this. this. You see, these reports, they are very important public documents. So if the auditors, after, in the, when, after the audit, if during management meetings, you should be able to streamline some of these observations so they don't stay in the, this one, it cannot be, I don't know how, we don't have any process of editing it. So in the future, any researcher may, based on this, uh, use it to undertake some research. So this, these observations are very critical. If you disagree with them, uh, let them realign it to what you think actually caused the dwindling fortunes in the transactions, other than allowing them to make this observation so they stay in the report. Everybody will say that, that your policy is not having the positive effect from the way it's supposed to be. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Governor, we are done with the reports. Okay, okay. Sorry, if you can permit me, it might be a public interest question. Uh, I just want a little assurance from uh, the governor. I'm sorry, I have to come back to the contractors issue. You know, I am excited about it, and I commended the bank for the payment because these are foreign contractors. We know, but they are executing local jobs. You know, that's why I wanted to know how you are making the payment to these contractors. And at least uh, I had been privy to the support and how the jobs were accelerated, you know, uh, through uh, some payments from uh, Bank of Ghana because we were paying the foreign element, you know, of this contrast to the contractors. And it helped them. You know, if you look at the jobs that they executed, the open call job that you mentioned about the motorway, you know, and even the facility, you know, uh, uh, for the for the just ended African Games, you know, because Bank of Ghana, you know, uh, paid the foreign exchange component to all these contractors executing the local jobs, you know, uh, before government portion could come in, it helped. And I want you to give us the assurance, because these jobs are still in 
currency. They are in progress. So a lot of them have been uh, completed. So once we have you here, can you assure this committee that this trend of payment, which is commendable, you know, all things being equal, will continue you know, so that we will get uh, uh, good progress on the infrastructural development of our country. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Minister. Maybe I should also congratulate you because you really had oversight over all of that construction work that went on. We all saw in this country the amount of effort uh, that you put into executing those jobs. So congratulations to you first. For the economy as a whole, I can tell you that things are improving. Our foreign exchange reserve levels are improving. Recently, the World Bank, thanks to the members of parliament, approved a facility. So we have had uh, $300 million added to our reserves. All of that you know, strengthens our position uh, to support you in executing these types of projects. So rest assured that so long as the economy continues on the path that we are on, we should be able to help you deliver. Thank you. Okay. Um, Mr. Governor, we have a couple more uh, public interest questions for you. F first one is, uh, uh, on yes, sir, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I just want to uh, find out or ask the governor how much money has been printed for, and how it has impacted the economy, if you could tell us. Should I take all the public interest questions that they go, or I'll take them one by one? Mr. Chairman. One by one. I cannot tell you exactly as I sit here how much money has been printed, but also to assure you that the Bank of Ghana's money printing program is done on the basis of a model of the economy. And a major determinant of how much money is printed is the size of the cocoa crop. So depending on the size of the cocoa crop, you could have a different you know, uh, demand for money. It's, it's just an estimate. Of, of transactions demand for money. So depending on the transactions demand for money that the bank estimates, that is what will determine the printing program over a three year, over a three year period. Thank you. All right, the next one from Honorable Aka. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Governor. demonstrations uh, asking for your resignation. The factors are known. And it is said that uh, you described the demonstrators, mainly the NDC, as some well of the opposition members of parliament. You described them as hooligans. I would like to know if uh, you still stand by that, that some of us sitting here as hooligans or that you will take this opportunity to retract and maybe apologize, then we move on. Or you still maintain that because we exercise our rights to demonstrate under this constitution, you still describe us as hooligans. Thank you. Chairman, I think this particular question, this particular question, uh, I'll Ranking, you are not, you are not a chairman. Allow, allow your ranking to speak. Ranking, you are not a chairman. Allow your ranking to speak. Ranking, you are not a chairman. Why? You are not a chairman, ranking. This particular question. Public, this is a, this is uh, oh, Please, please, please. Be dear chorus. Allow your ranking to speak. I'm saying, chairman. This. I'm talking to chairman. I'm talking to chairman. I'm a ranking member. I'm saying that this particular question. The governor may 
choose to answer or not because it has got nothing to please please allow me it has got nothing to do with why we are here and and you see and you see it is it is something that is hearsay or something maybe he didn't even say it but he has the right to, to answer or not thank you very much my Mr. point Chairman. is i got nothing to do before we are fact, here. this so is I what i was think it's a fair question i was thank coming you. Uh, coming to say that those Rankin, who know me this is i think this is the more reason why the governor should be given the opportunity to explain himself he may have said it or he may not have said it so he can clear the air right now this is why i'm saying that i think that those who know me and know my character and you have not heard a single word of a recorded message with me describing parliamentarians in that ma manner. This was some foreign journalist description of the conversation we had, and I disown it. Thank you very much. Case closed on that one. Uh, Mr. Governor, last one from me. Go Coast um, customers, uh, uh, those who... Go Coast Securities, those who are to be paid, when should they expect their payments? Because some of us are victims. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I hear this is an issue which is being handled by the Ministry of Finance and the SEC. So uh, it's better for me to keep quiet on it. Thank you very much. Th thank you very much, Mr. Governor, for attending to this committee. You are hereby discharged. Thank uh, you very much. Sir. Members, uh, we are sitting again tomorrow, and uh, we are going to consider... Oh you've, oh, you've been discharged. We are going to sit again tomorrow, and we are going to look at two reports. One is a performance audit report of the Auditor General on the construction of Cocoa Roads. And the other one is performance audit report on the Auditor General on selected roads in Ghana. We are expecting um, Ministry of Roads and Highways, Ministry of um, Ghana Highway Authority, Department of Urban Roads, and Department of Feeder Roads, and also Cocoa Board. Thank you very much. And you didn't know. So now you know. So meeting is now adjourned to tomorrow morning, 9 o'clock.